Hello and welcome to my Miss Brazil Universe recap. I am Danny Walker. I'm a pageant coach and I was Miss Montana USA 2018. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell as well as follow me on social media. If you watched my Miss Puerto Rico recap and you thought that was rough, well this might be a little rougher because I don't speak Portuguese. So if I was confused then, you can only imagine how much more confused I am now. First things I was thinking about was the opening number of the entire thing. It obviously seemed very inspired by the Amazon, which was very fitting for the country. I loved that. Absolutely loved the styling of the girls' outfits. There was great variation. The colors complemented each of the girls in a different way. It was interesting how they introduced them in threes, and we saw a lot of posing variation. It wasn't just walking up and putting your hands on your hips. Quite a few of the girls gestured their arms out. They might have blown a kiss. They might have sort of waved or done something a little bit more interesting on stage for those introductions. Personally, I'm a huge fan of bringing formers back and having them be a part of your program still and a part of the show. I love that we saw recent Miss Brazils during the telecast and also working directly with the contestants. I think that's so important. I don't know why we don't do that at Miss USA. That's something that I would change about the organization. I would bring back former title holders so they could share what they've learned through their experiences to set the next group of title holders up for success. I wasn't really sure what was going on during the clips during the telecast. So I thought it was cool that the girls seemed to have a spa day. I would assume that's a part of their Miss Brazil activities. And I would assume also that that has something to do with a sponsor or tourism in the area and promoting that just like we see in a lot of other pageants. And I was super jealous because I just thought, why couldn't we have a really great spa or pool day at Miss USA. I also thought it was interesting to see each of the girls do a swimsuit interview. When I was preparing for Miss San Diego City's USA, that was something that was really standard for us that not a lot of people know. When you would prepare San Diego City's title holders for Miss California USA, the girls would do an interview in a swimsuit, in an interview outfit, and in an evening gown. That definitely changed the way that you felt and I think carried yourself by changing the outfits because it was sort of strange to do an interview honestly in a swimsuit but I sort of like how it switches things up a little bit and just prepares them for new things that helps the girls to be more flexible. I wish I understood what the girls were saying and what was going on during that part so if anybody wants to share a little bit about what was going on in the comments that would be so helpful. It also struck me that they were interviewing with three females kind of like how we see at Miss USA. If you love this channel and you want to support it and you're watching on a mobile device make sure that you screenshot this episode and post it in your Instagram stories and tag me at Danny Walker to let me know what you think about this year's show. Please bear with me. It's difficult for me to review this because I have trouble saying all of the girls' titles or names, so let's just struggle together. My thoughts for Swim were this. I thought that it felt very much like a runway show. When I saw Miss Rio Grande de Sol, I felt like I was watching a Victoria's Secret runway show, so that was pretty fabulous. I would say in true Brazilian form, there was not a lot of coverage on the swimsuits that the girls were wearing. I would say as a group, so far, having watched Miss Philippines, Miss USA, Miss Puerto Rico, and Miss Brazil, for the swimsuit portion, the strongest walks that I have seen so far were at Puerto Rico. These girls right here, like I said, they, they gave me these runway vibes and not pageanty vibes, which actually I really liked, and I would like to see Miss USA go in this direction for the national pageant. I think that that would really increase viewership if we made it even more like the Victoria's Secret runway. One girl that stood out to me was Districo Federal. She kind of reminded me of Olivia Culpo when she was competing on stage. Something about her smile reminded me of Olivia Culpo's smile when she was competing at Miss USA. It was just like I'm having so much fun on stage and it just seemed very genuine. Somebody who had a really competent turn was Sao Paulo. To me, she had the best turn out of all the contestants on stage. Now looking at the girls overall, like I said, they, they sort of added their own take to swimsuit. And I would say when I watched all of them come out for swimsuit, if I was judging the pageant, I would have selected the winner as my top swimsuit score, only because everything she did was really clean and effortless when she came out. She did not appear ever to be trying too hard on swimsuit. That is one of my comments overall for this pageant. I felt like she won because she was never trying too hard and she did just enough to move on to the next round, which we see sometimes. But I think that their strategy for 
for universe needs to be a little bit different and I'll talk about that in a minute. If you're preparing for a pageant and you need a little extra help, click the description below. You're gonna find a link to my free pageant crash course. Within it, I'll share with you how I prepared for a pageant within only two weeks and was able to capture the title. I don't know about you, but when I was watching the show, I got some serious Miss USA vibes because we saw a lot of shots of Julia throughout the show, just like what IMG has been doing in recent years. The other thing that struck me as strange was when they pulled her aside for an interview after the swimsuit competition, which is what IMG has been doing within recent years for their Miss USA and Miss Universe winners. Não tem nem como falar, né, gente? Um concurso com tantas mulheres maravilhosas já está no top 5 daquele alívio. I personally hate that they've been doing that because as soon as I see a girl get pulled for one of those interviews, you basically know that she's gonna win and it ruins the entire show for me personally as I'm watching that. So that's something I wish that they hadn't have done. It just sort of seemed like the whole time that the show was being set up for Julia to win. And I don't like when shows look like that because if you really evaluate her performance, if I was judging personally, I believe that she deserve to win that title and you don't need to push her so much in front of the judges throughout the entire show when a girl truly deserves the title. She doesn't need that extra help. Let's talk about gown. What I liked about the evening gowns is that they coordinated and once again it felt like a runway show because it looked like the dresses were all from the same collection and I think that that cohesiveness is what really made it come across that way. For evening gown I really loved Please excuse how I'm gonna say this, Ciara. I loved the fringe on her white gown and just the overall style of the dress. That was working for me. Obviously a gorgeous girl, but really, which girls aren't stunning from Brazil. I like our winner's spin turn in the beginning of gown. I thought that was a nice little touch. And one thing I would like to see from her at Miss Universe is facial changes. So when we saw her come out for swim and we saw her come out for gown, she's always just smiling. And it worked at her national competition. But one thing that we see at Miss Universe over and over and over and over again are facial changes. So if they want a Miss Universe winner this year, they're going to work on that in coordination with her runway preparation. I don't know how to say this local title, P-I-A... UI, I think. Interesting to me that she does this arm pose at the end of the runway. I think if she would have won the pageant, then this suddenly would be a trend in pageantry and girls would be trying it all over the place. Overall though, love the evening gown competition. There wasn't anything kind of crazy that happened in my opinion and there wasn't anything just like over the top that blew my mind either from it. It was just a solid gown competition. And I also loved how after the girls walk the runway, they split them really, really far because during the telecast for Miss USA this year, after the girl walked the runway, the other girls were lined up on the side ready for that sort of final look, and I thought they were sort of close. So if you were watching from at home, yes, they zoomed in on the girls, and it looked like she was alone on stage, but if you were a judge and actually in the venue, the girls that had already walked for gown were very close to the girl who was actually walking out. So what I liked is that Brazil's pageant split those girls really far to the side, so they were not distracting at all when the next girl was coming out for her moment for a gown. Let's talk about onstage questions. This was tough because I had to use a Google Translator to try to understand the questions, so I might not even understand the questions and answers. Please correct me if you know what they were saying because I didn't. Sierra, I think that is how I say it. Someone help me. Her question was about Miss Spain. Honestly, I'm so bored with these Miss Spain questions. We keep hearing them at every pageant. Everybody's just asking what a girl thinks about trans contestants competing at Miss Universe. Frankly, who even cares? They're allowed to compete at Miss Universe. Now, if it was a thing where like, you know, they couldn't compete and like, do you believe that they should be allowed to compete now? Then I would see it being more relevant, kind of like when Olivia Culpo got a similar question when she won Miss Universe. That made sense to me. But now that trans contestants can compete. I'm so bored with this question. It's kind of like when they always ask about should marijuana be legalized, but then they ask in a state where it's already legalized. I'm like, guys, we're past this. Let, let's move on now. They asked her about Miss Spain and do you believe basically that the rules of Miss Universe and the competition should reflect the diversity of society? Personally, I actually really liked how they worded the question, or at least how Google translated it. It sounded nice to me. And I believe she said if you have the desire to change and sort of share that with the world that she thinks that 
something about gender identity. I'm assuming she's saying, yes, I think that you should compete. I think so. Someone help me. Anyway, she spoke pretty well. She seemed to carry herself very well. She didn't seem too nervous. Next one, Rio Grande Sol. Sol? I don't know. They asked her about legalizing abortion or her thoughts on legal abortion. Question, is abortion legal in Brazil? From what I took away from the question, I would say no, it's not legal or maybe not legal everywhere, not really sure. She talked about women's rights of their own body and that she thinks it should be legalized in cases of rape. I don't know if she actually said if she thinks it should be legal all the time because I don't have an exact translation. So if anybody wants to share that, either way, she spoke very well and very confidently. Sao Paulo. So they asked her what would her strategy be if she won Miss Universe. She basically said that her focus was winning Miss Brazil first, which I love that. It's like, okay, yeah, I'd love to win Miss Universe, but first crown me as Miss Brazil so I can do that. To me, that said that she was really being present and living in the moment. Then she talked about how the title is not just about beauty, but it's about having a voice. And then she wants to show the strength of Brazilian women everywhere around the world. So I think she's saying that her strategy is to demonstrate the strength of Brazilian women and that would get her the title. I thought that she seemed to do really well answering it and when you get the crowd going, it does not hurt. Rio Grande do Norte. Ugh. Her question was something about families and society. I was really lost on that one. Once again, seemed to answer very well. This was an overall very strong top five. She talked about that family is somebody who gives you love and essentially I think she was talking about provides for you, like provides for the children. Someone help me. I think that the answer seemed to be good, but maybe it just wasn't really detailed or specific. Maybe it was a little bit vague in terms of the actual translation. Lastly, let's talk about our winner. So she was asked as an ambassador of the country, how would you describe the something situation to a foreigner? I don't know the situation. Google translated it as rationing. What is, what is the translation? She says that Brazil's situation is somewhat challenging and we have many things to change, but the scenario made us realize how important it is that we join and understand how much our vote matters when we choose our representatives and actively participate in the transformation of our country. Her answer seemed to be very well worded. I, I listen to the translation Google got here. It sounded pretty good. She seemed to exemplify what a title holder should be for the country and how you would share about your country with other countries like she will be doing at Miss Universe. Her answer to me did sound the most well-developed. Let's talk about Julia and Miss Universe and what's going on. In recent years, Brazil has been doing pretty well. And we see them in semifinals. They've really been picking up traction in terms of popularity. And there's quite a few people out there, I would say, if you are one, comment below, let me know if you are Team Brazil. There's quite a few people who want Brazil to finally take home that Miss Universe crown. And a lot of people really think that Julia is going to be the one to do it for them. So what I have seen about her in terms of her social media is that she is a digital influencer and she's a journalist within her country. I believe that right there is a huge asset for her at the Miss Universe competition. One thing that really stuck out to me during the pageant, because I don't speak Portuguese, is her body language and her tone and how she was answering questions. The way that she was answering questions like, perfect example, when they pulled her for that little swimsuit interview after the swim competition. She literally sounded like a host. She looked like a host. The way that she carried herself was so professional in terms of on-camera work and I think that that is really what made her stand out at the pageant and I think that that can help her to stand out in this universe. Now that being said, I do not know if she speaks English. Please share with me if you know that she does. I think that that would help her a lot more in terms of answering an on-stage question in a way that would be very strong and very competitive because a lot of things do get lost in translation when they start using translators. Everything about Julia's performance to me was solid, it was clean, but it was also safe. And at her national pageant, she didn't have to do anything over the top in terms of like a crazy turn or insane wardrobe to take home that national title. But I believe at Miss Universe, you have to have something that's really going to make you stand out. So is that your personal brand? Is that her style? I think that one thing that already 
already helps her is her short straight hair. I haven't seen other title holders look like that, so I think looking different from other people is already one of the first steps you can take towards making yourself stand out in a crowd. I think that she has the potential to have a very strong interview because of the way that she answers and potentially a strong onstage question if she does make it that far during the competition. One thing that I referenced earlier though is I think we're gonna need to see something a little more daring or different in terms of her facial expression. I think that's necessary to change that on stage. And then also I think that whether she's going to have a stronger walk, not that her walk isn't already good enough to win her national pageant, but there are girls with really, really fierce walks at Miss Universe. So whether we're talking about a really strong walk or a really great spin turn or something to make her stand out on stage, because I think that you would get lost in the crowd unless you do something to really make the audience cheer and go crazy, sort of like Catriona's lava walk that everyone talked about, right? Or if we think about Pia at the end, it just reminds me the end of her evening gown routine when she was smiling walking down during gown and then she breaks that eye contact for just a second and when she turns back, she has this like super serious smize gaze at the judges and then she smiles like Pia all over again. That was a moment during the pageant and I think that if Brazil is going to have a Miss Universe winner, that's what she's going to need a Miss Universe. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and also follow me on social media as well. Thank you guys so much. Love you. Bye.